Welcome back to The Nora Show. As you can see, I am using my brand new shiny skirt sloper that is so much more accurate than my first one. This accuracy is due to the last year of sewing experience. Like anything, we always want to start hobbies like this with absolute accuracy and ability and stunning result. But in truth, we actually do have to start with where we are at regarding our experiential level. Although I absolutely know that this sloper is me accurate. There's a huge question regarding how I am about to apply it. This episode is my first test using it within the context of a Haslam design. The Haslam system of dress cutting came out of England in the 1920s and was around through the 1960s. To use the system, you need a book of draftings, a foundation drafting book, and the Haslam chart in order to create your foundation piece as well as any of the pattern draftings. The idea is that you have a foundation piece that is you, but in 2D form, flat you. I have been struggling with the ability to use this foundation piece that I ended up with after using the Haslam Foundation book. I think this bad result is due to me not having average measurements. You know, the original reason that I moved away from commercial patterns and started drafting clothing in the first place. This failure to fit resulted in me learning a more complex and detailed drafting process that has now resulted in what I am calling a modern sloper or moulange, mainly because I'm not entirely sure what the difference between sloper and moulange actually is. I am starting to think that these two words mean different things around the world and also it is decade dependent. Therefore, for the context of this video, my modern day sloper or moulange is me in 2D form on a perfect level that has very slight ease, very slight, no more than half an inch in certain places. Anyway, today's episode is me trying this modern sloper within the context of a 1931 Haslam skirt. You can see that I am using the top part of my sloper and that I'm ignoring all of the Haslam pattern measurements to get a fitted waist to low hip shape in the pattern, which is what the end result is supposed to be. So I am simply using what I know fits me from the start so that I'm not trying to reinvent my 2D flat self over and over and over again because that's hard and a waste of time. After I have the top part of this skirt done, I am looking at this pattern and I'm thinking that the bottom of this skirt pattern doesn't need any change from what Haslam is suggesting. A large rectangle of pleats looks easy enough. I haven't really done a lot of pleats before this, and I used an insane amount of starch and an iron to get the linen to actually not bite me. After all was said and done, I figured out while I was falling asleep one night how I would do pleats in the future. I'll talk about that later in the video when I get to the part where I sew up the pleats. So to sum up, this video is the first official test regarding the use of a sloper not created with the Haslam chart. Let's see if it works. If it does, this is going to be a massive victory for me in my understanding of this system and the concept of creating your own clothing across the decades. This is very exciting. But first, I need to deal with a box. I have a new pair of shoes from American Duchess and I am super excited because I realized my, my 20s and 30s sewing I don't have era appropriate shoes. So I bought myself a standard good pair of black shoes that should be able to go with absolutely everything and be era appropriate. Let's unbox them. Oh my goodness, everyone. I'm so excited. I have a new pair of shoes. I have a skirt to do, but shoes first. As of the taping of this video, I am not big enough for American Duchess to give me a pair of shoes, sponsor this ad, or have anything to do with this. So this is a genuine for me purchase that has nothing to do with being sponsored. Ah! Lollipop, I heard that they did this. This is one of my first pairs, so I'm excited. <gasps> shoes cannot be referred. That's right, you better make sure that you're on carpet or you keep your feet up in the air until you know that you want to keep them. <gasps> oh. <gasps> oh, 
Oh, they're so soft. Oh, look at these delicate little buttons. I should have gotten a button hook. I can already tell that now. I'll make that on my next purchase. Oh. Look at that. That's so elegant. I'll be absolutely keeping these. These are absolutely fabulous. I love where the heel sits. I don't feel like I'm teetering on top of my shoe or anything. Nothing is squeezing. It went right over my little bone spur on my left foot. It's tiny, but it does cause problems. So I have to, there's always a question on shoes for me. I'm gonna go upstairs. I'm going to do the dishes and then I'm gonna come downstairs and I'm going to work on my 1931 blue pleated skirt and I'm going to catch you up with where I'm at. I'm going to hopefully be able to finish this today. And I love that idea of being able to finish it. Okay, everyone, I've got my lollipop from American Duchess. I've got a clean kitchen and I've got my water. And I still don't know where to look at the, at the camera in order to actually look like I'm looking at you because I'm really bad at this. Okay, this is what I'm going to do. I am going to get out my blue skirt. And last night, I was, as I was falling asleep, I realized how I could fix something. When doing pleats, what I would do next time, because there will be a next time with pleats, go to the inside. And I'm gonna flip this around. All right, this is the inside of the skirt, which looks strikingly similar to the outside because that's what pleats do. I would have sewn this direction down about an inch to keep the, this part of the material together so that when I sewed it in here, this material would meet and stay there. And I would do it with a really wide stitch on the machine and then I just stitch rip it out after it gets sewn in. Perfect. This is not perfect. It is also However, good enough that I am not willing to stitch rip this out and redo it. Uh, 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 no, 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 no. I am perfectly fine with having an evolution in my closet of this is good enough and now look at how good Nora became as time went on. I am okay with that. This is reality. I am not Hollywood. I am just a mom in her living room having a lot of fun. Okay, so today, we're going to call the pleats done. I actually really like them. I really like this blue. Look at it with my eyes. <gasps> oh, this blue is fantastic. Okay, so this blue is fantastic on me. I need to make a waistband. I've been waffling back and forth on if I was going to do a no waistband scenario where you just sort of flip over and then do like a hook and eye right here. I don't think I'm going to do that. I actually think I would like to put in an actual waistband on this. I also don't think that it's ever going to actually show because this is the shirt that I think will go the best with this. And I'm having trouble finding some material that actually matches this. I ended up buying this, hoping that it was going to match this. It doesn't. It's just a little bit off. I am not super happy with my material choices right now when it comes to anything that I can pick out in person. My Joann's right now is not, it's not well stocked and it's actually making me a little worried because there's entire sections that are completely empty and it's the good stuff. Like I can find plenty of quilting material. I could, and, and if I was in quilting, you know, if I was still in my quilting phase, oh yeah, I'd be all over that but I'm not and I want things like silk and linen and that's really not what my Joann's has right now and there's not a another fabric store because Colorado Fabrics closed 
a year ago. Now, I mean, I have a huge amount of material from that sale. Man, am I glad I did that. And that was the February, that was like, I think November, December of 2019, right before the pandemic hit. Wow, I've been happy that I had that. That was a good investment. That was an unknown investment. I feel very justified in the amount of money that I spent on that. Whew. Um, where was I? I got lost. I'm just gonna put in a waistband and go from there. Okay, let's, let's sew. Okay, I've got my my waistband attached. I'm going to stitch it on the back or in, in the inside. I've got the hem tape attached. I always put a contrasting color with my hem tape. It's just what I like. And I'm about to hem that. So I'm going to put on a movie and do all the hand sewing and then I'll insert a tiny button here and a buttonhole and this will be done. So I see no reason that I won't be able to finish this today. Go me. Lovely. I have a finished skirt. Okay, I've got a few little threads here or there that I need to take care of. But as a reminder, this is not according to the pattern in the Haslam book. This is actually from my actual sloper. And I figured if I took the top part of my sloper and then followed the Haslam design for the pleats down here, that this was going to fit and fit rather well. I think that I need a shirt or a blouse that actually comes down to here and I'm and none of this is actually going to end up showing in the outfit. I don't know what I was thinking when it comes to the thread that I used for the zipper area, but if there is ever something that I change on this skirt, it's going to be ripping that out and redoing that. The zipper also didn't hide quite as well as I would have liked. In other words, my zipper insertion was almost right except for two little mistakes but I do like from here to here right there that that part I like that part that looks nice except for the incredibly blue I don't know what happened and then this seems to have bunched up with the sewing machine and I didn't notice any of this until like now so I'm thinking that I must have done this at night when the lighting was off and my eyes played tricks on me. However, I can say that my stitching, my hand stitching is starting to look rather nice. That's the inside, that's the outside, that's the inside. So with practice, my hand stitching practice is coming along quite nicely. All right, let's see the skirt. my I am pleased right now okay this was 100% an attempt on my part to prove that you can use your own personal sloper that is you to a T on paper skip the entire Haslam drafting process for making a foundation piece and you can stay and you were and you are more likely to end up with something that fits and is era appropriate. Mm, I am victorious right now. Okay, so this skirt is from 1931. For everyone out there saying, 
gosh, that also looks like, and then you insert another year. You are so right. This skirt seems incredibly generic in that you could see this skirt in a couple of different eras, in a couple of different settings, and no one would blink an eye. So I'm going to say that this pattern is fantastic for a vintage wardrobe, just in general, just as a generic awesomeness. I also have to say, I am really loving, and I mean loving, sewing with linen. Linen is, ah, oh, it is just fantastic. I know it wrinkles, like you breathe on it and wrinkles, but I really love the way it sews up. And you know what I even love more? Wearing it. Like the skirt sloper, my ultimate goal is to now uh, confirm two more times with uh, the 1950, like a 1950 uh, pencil skirt, a 1930, uh, a later 1930 skirt. There's a couple more skirts that I want to try to make sure that that my skirt sloper, my modern skirt sloper, actually can be applied and easily end up with vintage clothing that really fits. I gotta say, the fit on this blue skirt, mwah. There isn't a thing that is irritating me. Okay, take a look at that. This, I can't purchase this in stores, ever. That is just straight up following me. Could not be more pleased. And then a 1930s dropway shirt that comes up. I'm thinking about the lace. Yes, all of this, yes. I am so excited. All right, let me think. I think I've said everything that I'm supposed to say about this skirt. And yes, I'm moving more into the 1920s and 1930s in general. Okay, everyone. I'm going to pull all the video off of this, edit it. I'm gonna get out the brown linen and I've got a longer skirt that I wanna, that I wanna sew up. And just in case the footage didn't show the skirt with the shoes, I'm gonna lower this down and that's where we're gonna end. I hope everyone is having a lovely creative week. See you next week.